Good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you're joining with us today. We want to welcome you from Marga Systems to today's webinar where we will be discussing the best practices for designing workflows that work for your business. And we would also be going through our experiences uh, from numerous client engagements that we can bring to you uh, so that it will help you in designing your workflows better in the future. So before we start, just a quick introduction about who we are. Uh, we are a boutique technology consultancy firm uh, who works with mid-sized and large organizations to primarily help them with their collaboration and business processes and digital transformation journeys. And we do this with mainly five uh, core focus areas for our organization, which is around automation of workflows, may it be around the IBM stack or the Microsoft stack around SharePoint and Office 365, or migrating from one technology stack to other. Uh, we help customers around their collaboration initiatives, enterprise collaboration platforms, and um, their entire digital journey around it. Uh, apart from that, we also do management and maintenance for a lot of our customers where we own up their infrastructures and application and um, ensure that it is always up to the mark. So that's a quick introduction about what are the services that Marga has to offer. And uh, to introduce our presenters today, myself, Chirag Bharate, I am the Director of Product Engineering here at Marga. Uh, as part of this role, I oversee all our technology initiatives and key technology projects that we do with our customers globally. And with me is Ananta, who is uh, our project manager for most of the workflow projects that we have done in the past. And we term him as our in-house workflow specialist. So with that, I would hand over to Ananta, who would walk you through some of our experiences and some of the best practices that we have brought to you today uh, with this webinar. Ananta, over to you. Thank you, Shurag. Uh, good morning and uh, uh, welcome to everybody. Uh, let's start uh, with uh, the agenda for today's uh, webinar. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, workflows. Uh, we'll briefly introduce them for those of you that uh, don't really have a clear idea of what's a workflow. Uh, we'll talk about uh, what makes a workflow great. Uh, we'll be talking about some best practices uh, that would help you bulletproof your workflow. Uh, we'll linger a little bit on uh, what the future holds for workflows and uh, uh, talk about uh, how uh, you can measure uh, performance of your workflows through uh, um, some key metrics. Um, at the end of the webinar, we'll have a, a, a short QA session. And uh, uh, for those of you that give us feedback uh, at the end of the webinar, uh, you would receive a, a free copy of our uh, workflow checklist. Uh, but that's for those, those of you that stay till the end. So uh, let's start by uh, just introducing uh, what a workflow really is. Now, uh, I am I am an engineering graduate, and if you would go ask my professor, um, he would give you this long-winded academic uh, academic uh, explanation of what a workflow is. Um, but this is stuff that always went over my head. Um, so let me try to simplify that even further. So. Essentially, a workflow is any repeatable set of business activities um, that are performed sequentially and uh, to complete a task. So that's what a workflow is. Now, um, we're just going to have a quick poll. Uh, Scott, over to you for the poll. OK. So our first little poll is, what is your role in the organization? So this is a select one. And this will kind of give um, Anatha a, a kind of a background of who everyone is and can maybe uh, gear his presentation from here on forward based on the majority um, of the responses here. So this is great. Over 80, okay, everybody has voted. This is great. Everybody's alive and well. I'm going to share the results. So 57% of us are the process owner or business analyst. 29% of us are software developers and 14 uh, percent are from the business team that uses workflow. Awesome. So, uh, looking at this, looking at this, uh, these numbers, um, I, I think I have a fair idea of who you are, and uh, I know I have something in here for all of you. 
I'm just going to ask you to give me some more information. Uh, another poll now, Scott. Okay. So the second poll is just a kind of a follow up. What is your primary goal for attending the, this webinar? Is it A, uh, or the first option, wish to master the, the design of workflows, wish to drive business benefits through workflows, or you wish to develop and code workflows that work, or I'm here just to learn the subject? All right, over 70% of us have voted. Let's get a couple more in. They're coming in fast. All right, I'm going to share the results. So a third, a third, a third. So <laughs> that's that's pretty unusual. All right, so there you go. Um, Jirag uh, and, and Anatha, you have your work cut out for you. <laughs> okay, awesome. Thank you, Scott. Uh, thanks, everybody, for letting us know who you are and uh, what you're here for. Um, let me move on. Um, let me start with uh, telling you what we think is a great workflow. Uh, so this is what a great flow, workflow looks like. Um, uh, we did, uh, this, this is a case study or uh, of sorts that we did for a client. So uh, we, uh, one of our clients wanted to uh, automate their process approval process, uh, proposal approval process rather for their uh, sales force. Um, and uh, after we automated the workflow, uh, they saw a 60% increase in uh, quotations approvals happening within two days. And what this translated to was a 30% increase in the proposal wins. So that's what a great workflow looks like at the end of it all. Uh, another example uh, for a manufacturing client of ours, uh, we uh, automated their technical warranty claim process, uh, which is their part of their quality control. Now, what this did, did for them is it reduced uh, the lead time for technical report creations by 50% and ultimately translated to about 20% savings in warranty costs because uh, they, could, they could make changes to their production systems uh, quicker, uh, taking note of what's happening in the field. Uh, so, so having seen uh, some quantitative uh, advantages of what uh, a good workflow can uh, deliver, uh, so let's let's take a look at some qualitative ideas. So uh, the benefits that you can get from a workflow are can be broadly uh, broadly uh, divided into process benefits and uh, business benefits. Now, uh, when I mean process benefits, these are what happens along the way uh, when you uh, implement or automate your bro uh, automated your workflow. So you you tend to get uh, uh, improved visibility on your processes, um, human errors get reduced because things get automated and uh, ultimately things are more easier to use. Now, since things are more easier to use, uh, stuff gets done faster, so uh, your turnaround time of requests uh, really uh, improves. Now, what all of this means is uh, you get a lot of data and you can take decisions based on this data. Uh, that's what inside driven, driven data decisions come in. Now, Based on all these process benefits, these all lead to business benefits. Essentially, your, your revenue uh, increases, um, your costs reduces. Um, ultimately, it also leads to uh, increased customer satisfaction. Let me quickly talk about uh, uh, a case study that we did. And uh, that will that will kind of tell you how uh, we do things. So this was a, a worldwide manufacturer of uh, domestic fittings, and uh, specifically uh, we automated the workflow for one of the workflows for their uh, uh, sales organization within India. So this was uh, their corporate sales, uh, the remote work remote sales force. The remote sales force had a bunch of proposals that they had to provide to their customers. Uh, they had to get these uh, uh, proposals approved. Um, this was an Excel-based uh, uh, form that they had to fill in, email it to their uh, the corporate sales. Uh, the say approvers in the corporate sales department used to approve it based on a decision matrix that they had. And uh, well, because this is all email and uh, Excel-driven. Uh, there was no uh, centralized database of all these uh, uh, proposals because these were essentially existing in their local uh, PCs and laptops of this uh, remote sales force. 
and uh, because these were all uh, remote uh, there was no way of uh, getting insights uh, out of uh, insights and analytics out of this data that uh, uh, was uh, created so what we did uh, essentially was we moved everything out of the excel based uh, uh, system to uh, a browser based tool uh, for proposal creation and uh, everything else remained the same essentially the same decision matrix was uh, implemented on this uh, uh, web application um, and uh, we ensured that people could go onto the field uh, sit in front of the customer use pretty much any device they wanted be it uh, tablet uh, or a laptop or sometimes even their own uh, uh, cell phones and generate a code submit it and get it approved uh, as soon as possible and uh, this this created a centralized database of all the quotations that were created created uh, by this remote sales force from all over India and uh, we were able to uh, give the the uh, the sales managers analytics to uh, figure out who was doing what on the field um, some training costs were reduced because everything was uh, on the web and uh, it was on an easy to fill form. Now uh, just to recap, uh, their access process was based on emails and uh, uh, Excel um, and uh, we moved that to uh, a web based system. All the rules that they had for the decision making was also moved um, and everything was ac accessible over the web and this gave them uh, a bunch of data and analytics to build on. Now, uh, now that uh, we've actually gone through a couple of uh, uh, at least one case study, uh, we'll we'll talk about how we actually achieved it. What what did we do to uh, bulletproof this workflow uh, to get it to where it is? Uh, before that, I want to have some level of participation here, so I'm going to quickly uh, talk about a, a basic workflow and how uh, it gets designed. Now. All of you are uh, have been working in a corporate environment, and uh, a leave request is something that each one of you has had the chance to, you know, approach your manager with. Now, let's see what happens. And this is a workflow, right? This is a very simple workflow, or so we think. So uh, let's let's look at what happens when uh, you submit a leave request uh, to your manager. So you submit a request. It goes to your manager. Uh, the manager decides whether he, he or she needs to approve it. If you get approval, you probably get an email from the uh, manager. Uh, if the manager does not want to approve the request, once again you get an email request, email uh, informing you what has happened. Uh, now, now this looks, this all looks very simple, right? Uh, but there there are things that are missing here. Uh, I'm I'm pretty sure uh, all of you may be uh, able to give me a few things that you think are missing out of here. So can you go on to the uh, comment section and probably tell me what you think is missing out from the simple leave request process? Uh, I'm sorry, uh, to, the, to the chat section. So just a reminder, if you have your GoToWebinar control panel uh, collapse, you might need to expand that so you can get to the, the chat section. Okay, so let me, let me quickly, let me move on. Um, uh, I've got some inputs. So, uh, so let, let's let's see let's see uh, what happens here. So the employee submits a leave request. Uh, uh, typically, in some countries like India, we have what is called the notice period, where uh, uh, the employee cannot uh, uh, request for a, a vacation or leave at all. Uh, so we check whether the employee is on the notice period, uh, and then based on that, whether we check whether the leave balance is sufficient or not. If the leave balance is not sufficient, uh, the request is immediately disallowed. If the the employee has enough leave balance, we actually let the employee submit the leave request. The request gets sent to the manager. Now, we also have to uh, account for the fact that the manager may not be available immediately to 
uh, approve the request. Um, if, he's not, if he or she is not available, um, there is a possibility that somebody else within the organization might be able to approve this request. So the request gets sent to the sent to what is called the delegatee and uh, whether it gets to the delegatee or to the manager uh, and uh, ultimately the request needs to get acted on. Now if the request is not getting acted on there is probably an SLA that needs to be checked uh, and reminders sent and once the request is acted on again we go to the process of whether it's an up approved or not. Now we might the manager might need to have the historical leave data for the employee in question um, in this uh, fingertips before making this uh, decision and uh, again if he decides to approve the uh, the requester gets an e approval email again and reject the email goes as well. Now as you can see that what we thought was a simple leave request is not so simple at all. Uh, what have we seen here? Uh, we've we've kind of given some uh, uh, visual design which is showing the historical leave data for the uh, uh, manager. We have, we have uncovered some missing requirements which was you know whether the manager is available or not, some delegation, um, leave balance and all that. And also uh, there is a chance that we might allow or we might implement some smart automation in which uh, the manager might be able to approve uh, the leave request right by clicking a button within the email itself. So all this finally results in employee satisfaction which is ultimately what we want out of this uh, uh, process. So now uh, we actually have to go into uh, the design of a workflow and see what makes a workflow a good workflow. Uh, Paul, can we can we do poll three now? Okay, third Sorry, poll is coming poll up. Three. Yep, not a problem. Sorry. So here's the third and final poll. So what is your key focus area on workflows? So just select one. I need to design great workflows. I need to write code and automate workflows. I need to improve the benefits of current processes, or I'm driving process autom automation initiatives, or uh, I may work on workflow projects in the future. So we'll give us about the four more seconds here to get some votes in. We're over 70% voted, over 80% voted. Let's see if we can get closer to 100 again. That was great. Couple more votes. Okay, I'm going to share the results. So 17% uh, are saying uh, my key focus is to design great workflows. 50% I need to write code and automate workflows. Uh, no one's looking to improve benefits of current processes. 17% I'm driving process automation initiatives and 17% I may work on workflow projects in the future. So writing code and automating automating workflows is the clear winner here okay awesome so uh, thanks for the responses guys so uh, we'll we'll talk about uh, uh, how do we design a, a bullet bulletproof workflow and uh, pretty much there are three dimensions that are involved uh, the first step whether uh, uh, whoever you are within this process the first step is actually to get the context behind why you are actually embarking on this journey. Uh, typically you need to figure out who the process owner is and talk to them uh, and uh, during the process of talking to the process owner you will gain uh, insights on what the objectives are, what, what is expected out of this workflow automation. Um, you also need to talk to the users because users have their own interesting perspectives on what they need from the workflow so that's, that's important as well. Um, and when you when you talk to all these people, uh, you end up figuring out what the key problems and pain points are. Because um, not only do the, do you have to uh, uh, deliver a good workflow, but you also have to ensure that the current pain prob pain points and the problems that that they face on a daily basis uh, are resolved as well. And uh, finally, based on all these things, you need to figure out what are the uh, key 
uh, performance indicators that come out of this workflow. Uh, for example, when uh, when the the case study that I was talking about, um, uh, the 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 KPI for uh, the business user was to ensure that there are no uh, proposals pending for approval for more than three days. So that was his, uh, that any any so so that was his KPI. So figure out the KPI and ensure that you have that in mind when you actually uh, develop the uh, uh, workflow. So so the, the first dimension of uh, any workflow automation exercise is the uh, uh, clearly articulated workflow rules. Uh, by this I mean that uh, we need to have a clear idea of how the request will flow through uh, different approval levels. Uh, typically what are their actions available. Uh, the, the SLAs and any actions related to the SLAs and um, notification mechanisms uh, that are there to inform the various approvers about the status of their uh, uh, requests. Now, so I, I, I talked about uh, I talked about request flow through approvers. Uh, so, in 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 the example that I spoke about, uh, the there was uh, the the decision matrix for uh, the the workflow process was to uh, end the final approver uh, based on the percentage of discounts that were offered to the customer. So, based on that. Uh, so if they were going to offer anywhere between 8 and 15 percent of discount that was going up to the regional sales manager. So uh, the request needed to be approved to every level until the uh, uh, RSM approves it. So that's what I meant by uh, the approver uh, uh, flow. And then uh, for other applications we've had a, a flow that was not as straightforward. So what we provided was a methodology for, uh, for uh, a method for the business owner to actually uh, configure how the workflow was routed, how the request was going to be routed through uh, different uh, different levels and that was based on who was creating the uh, request, um, what was the kind of request and what status uh, that process need to be in order to reach a particular level uh, of approval. So, uh, it is it is often important to make uh, the workflow configurable in case the flow needs to be uh, modified based on several uh, parameters. Finally, uh, at every stage of the workflow, we need to be able to provide uh, the different actions that uh, are available for the user and just those actions that are available. So, at any given point of time, that needs to be ensured that uh, users are able to do only what they are supposed to do at that point. And uh, uh, as far as SLAs and notification mechanisms are concerned, uh, I, I'm, I'm just going to move on because that's not, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, but in terms of notification mechanisms, uh, we have to ensure these days uh, device independence is uh, uh, huge. So we have to ensure that uh, users get notified regardless of where they are and which device that they are using. So like I was mentioning, uh, one of our customers, we provided a way for them to uh, approve and reject requests straight from uh, the email on their mobile phone by incorporating two buttons right there in the email. So the notification mechanism is uh, pretty important. So the next dimension is uh, the fact that roles and privileges uh, need to be defined. Uh, we need to also ensure that as we saw in the leave request, uh, we have to ensure that uh, delegation is also are taken care of because otherwise we have requests sitting uh, without approvals for a long time so delegation is key. Finally it is always uh, uh, good to uh, integrate your workflows with the company directory so that uh, any change of roles uh, for employees or any new employees are automatically given access and uh, uh, the, the requisite permissions uh, because the because they are because everything is linked to the company directory so uh, so one of the ways we we did this for a particular customer in this case there were going to be only one person that was uh, approving the request so at each level so we allowed them to actually uh, uh, specify the user right there and uh, as far as delegation is concerned this is what i meant um, so the, the 
the sales executive that created the proposal decided to uh, leave the organization. So uh, we gave them a method to actually uh, allocate all the pending proposals that the current sales executive had uh, in progress to a new uh, sales executive that has joined the company. So uh, we, we ensured the delegation was not uh, a problem at all. The third, the third element or the third dimension to a bulletproof workflow is actually the uh, interface itself. Uh, so the interface design uh, needs to um, ensure that it, it satisfies the requirements for all the different uh, uh, user types that are out there that uh, use the uh, uh, workflow, which is why talking to every single uh, user type is important. Uh, and as I, I, I'm, I'm that that the workflow needs need workflow design needs to be uh, taking into consideration the mobile first uh, is also a good idea because uh, because like I said uh, users want to access their uh, uh, request based regardless of which device they are using at that point. Uh, finally, uh, we are also going to be talk. Uh, finally, we are also have to ensure that uh, the email alerts or basically any alert that goes to the uh, um, users is baseline and validated by uh, the business users so that uh, it contains exactly what information that is needed for them to make a decision uh, at that point of time. Uh, the last mentioned is uh, the the last mention the last item in this dimension is actually the audit trail. Uh, what the audit trail essentially means that at any given point of time, if someone opens up a particular request, uh, they would be able to see. Uh, who has acted on the uh, request so far and uh, if there are any comments and uh, uh, the decisions that they have taken are all there in, in one spot. So that's, that's what I mean by the audit trail. So to, to, to quickly illustrate what I just said about interface uh, designs, um, the, the proposal template uh, that I talked about uh, in the case study uh, was on, on Excel where all the data that was needed to uh, create the proposal was within a single uh, Excel file uh, with, a, with one sheet containing the form and all the details and all the data for uh, the, all the data that needed to go into the uh, proposal itself uh, on different worksheets within the same Excel sheet. So, uh, so what we did was we created a simple form uh, again on the web. Uh, we ensured that every single functionality that they could do uh, on the Excel sheet was possible here. Essentially, um, as you know, in an Excel sheet, once you once you fill in a value in one field, automatically everything else gets calculated based on formula and all that. So we ensure that all that is also possible within this uh, uh, within the within the web form. Similarly, uh, uh, the uh, the audit trail and the fact and the fact that we needed to be mobile first was also taken care of. Uh, what you see here is a, what you saw with the previous screen was the actual PC interface. Uh, what you see here is actually the same interface in uh, on a tablet. Um, again, it's a simple interface, but uh, it's accessible anywhere they want. Um, and uh, on the right, you see uh, how we did uh, the approval mechanism straight from email with with the buttons to uh, approve and reject. And and once again, as you can see, the email contents our baseline and everything that the manager or the approver needs to act on this uh, request is right there in the email so they can just go ahead and uh, uh, approve it right there and in case they still think they need more supporting information they can click and open the uh, uh, workflow application itself and view the request there to see the additional information that that is on there uh, finally this is what I meant by the audit trail uh, it essentially uh, is a historical record of what has happened within that request. Uh, it mentions who acted on it, who initiated it, uh, when uh, it was acted on, and uh, comments, if any. This, the comments are very pretty important, and uh, you need to ensure that at any any given point of time, nobody can approve or reject without adding uh, appropriate comments there. So, just to recap, uh, these are. Uh, what we call the three dimensions of a bulletproof workflow. Uh, so you have the various articulated workflow rules. Uh, you, you have defined roles and privileges. 
and uh, interface designs that are validated by all the users that are going to use the uh, workflow. Um, we'll, we'll quickly talk about what is the future of workflows and uh, where workflow design is headed. So let me just hand it off to uh, Chirag to take this forward. Thanks, Anantar. So workflows have been around for a long time, for decades, and we have been working with our clients, developing workflows with all sorts of technologies, starting with IBM and Domino, uh, but also with SharePoint, SharePoint using frameworks like Nintex or even Salesforce. Uh, there are different platforms. Uh, but as an organization, we also are constantly trying to find out where is the workflow future, where is it heading, considering the changing landscape of technology today. Uh, we identified that um, there are certain differences that are happening in the way workflows are being conceived in the future. And I think uh, most of you uh, said in the previous poll that you are right now in the journey of automating your processes using a workflow or coding a workflow. So the major shift that is happening is not from a traditional workflow. Uh, what you see is a bold statement about where chat apps uh, would become on chatbots would really become the future uh, of the internet that we see today and uh, that We actually align with this vision because um, it's not only easy it allows you to leverage uh, the power of artificial intelligence um, natural language processing is a core part of it and it ha It allows you to have workflows and then minimize the human interface or human interference uh, to the entire flow to be completed because there is a lot of automation that, gain, that can be brought in uh, at the back end. So there are two leading trends here. Uh, one is about the chat based interface where you use your chat client or your chat interface as the primary way to interact with workflows. And I think the way it is heading for future is with a voice enabled um, setup where uh, you can interact with your workflow uh, using uh, one of the voice based assistants that we have today, whether it is Amazon's Alexa, uh, Apple Siri or Cortana, for example. So uh, that's where we are heading to. What we are going to focus on today is talk a little more about chatbots, which is uh, which is the current state. We'll soon get to a state where we can also demonstrate a workflow with Alexa, but let's talk about the chatbots for now. So uh, we would like to highlight what is called a chatbot ecosystem, which is rapidly developing, and there are a lot of players in this space, not just um, organizations which have their chatbots live on their websites, but also enabling technologies which are trying to bring the uh, flavor of artificial intelligence or flavor of cognitive uh, uh, intelligence like IBM Watson into this whole play. And uh, what you see at the top are the different channels through which you can enter a workflow or you can interact with the workflow. And like I said, at the back end, it could be any platform. And this, although it looks like it's more in the consumer space, um, the picture is changing rapidly when uh, enterprise workflows are meant to be easier for the employees to uh, work with and this is where uh, the ease of use is headed for now. So uh, we will talk a bit about these technology but what we wanted to do is uh, quickly go through example of what uh, uh, AI powered chatbot looks like and um, so like I said we as an organization try to um, uncover what is the future so we this year's hackathon that we run in Marga every year this year's topic was to identify the future of workflows and this was one of the leading entries uh, in this year's hackathon so I just wanted to demonstrate uh, what the team achieved in a very short interval of time it was just a one and a half the hackathon and this is what we um, wanted to showcase as um, so let's do a quick um, run through this this is a slack based interface where uh, the user is interacting with the bot using slack so we let's say uh, greet the bot and talk about how the weather is but then uh, we get into question of can you help me with a certain use case in this case we are booking a room uh, for a, me a meeting room for um, your meeting and you're asking the bot and this is an interactive conversation this is live on slack and at the back end this has been integrated with sharepoint uh, our in-house SharePoint where we have a custom site set up uh, to sort of mimic a meeting reservation database. So like you can see, uh, we have now reserved a room using this chat bot on Slack and that reflects within a short while into the uh, SharePoint. Uh, this is coming through the SharePoint list and uh, uh, UI has been developed custom in SharePoint, but what it demonstrates is the power of how 
you can in a interactive way book a meeting room now uh, this, there are numerous things that are possible here you can cancel the uh, meeting reservation with the same sort of interface that you use for booking it um, but the point to be made is that it's not just about booking a meeting room is this then goes into the business context where um, if for those of whom uh, you are aware of office 365 sharepoint um, if you take an example of some organization department wants to provision a um, sharepoint site for example now that request typically it goes through a standard workflow goes to approval uh, imagine the same thing where you want to provision a site for your department uh, the request goes through a chatbot it gets received at the back end you have a automated workflow which goes through and as soon as your manager approves there is another automated script which generates provisions and sends you a mail that your site is ready for use now that's an enterprise workflow powered by um, the chat interface and uh, AI so uh, what you just saw uh, just to give a brief overview of what technologies went in uh, we understand that slack was the entry point which is the messenger interface and at the back end the conversational APIs were being called from API.ai or what is now renamed as dialogue flow um, the core business logic uh, which was written in node.js uh, is residing on one of our um, cloud hosted servers which is then interacting with SharePoint in the back end to query the system or to change some of the settings in the system. Um, the UI in the SharePoint is obviously made from jQuery and Bootstrap just to demonstrate what a meeting reservation system would look like. So uh, in short, this is what um, is available as of today. And this is going to just rapidly evolve uh, in the coming future. So this is where we think business workflows are heading. So with that quick, um, look into the future, I would give the controls back to Ananta to discuss some of the key metrics uh, around workflows. Thank you, Chirag. So uh, the, the, last, the last dimension of uh, a bulletproof workflow is essentially uh, the, the metrics. How do you measure it? How do you measure uh, the uh, effectiveness of the workflow that you've designed? Now, uh, we we typically do that uh, in terms of three three different ways to do that, um, and the first is through uh, real time reports. So at any given point of time, uh, uh, a user might be able to log into uh, the workflow application and see how many reports are pending, uh, how many requests are pending for approval uh, for them, uh, how many reports are pending for approval with their manager, um, and based on uh, whatever. Uh, 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 authentication mechanisms we have in place so they'll be able to see uh, the reports uh, uh, for those uh, the next is the hindsight reports that essentially are uh, based on historical data uh, for example uh, the the use case that we talked about uh, one of the reports that we gave them was uh, how many how many uh, proposals uh, were not approved even after three three days since they were uh, uh, created. So that was one hindsight report that we get, put in and this was broken uh, uh, or broken up by manager so we know who was, who was sitting on uh, 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 proposals for approval and who was uh, uh, approving them faster. Uh, finally, even after we do uh, uh, real-time reports and hindsight reports, it's often uh, required to have ad hoc reports on the fly to uh, so to, to, to quickly check the performance. So ad hoc reports are rather another way of uh, measuring the workflow effectiveness. So so using using uh, uh, these three kinds of reports, uh, uh, it's 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 possible to ensure that uh, uh, your to ensure that your workflow is effective. And based on what you see here, it might be needed to uh, tweak the workflow design um, uh, or tweak the rules and uh, to ensure that the uh, effectiveness improves. So all this uh, uh, will lead to the success of organization because these days uh, uh, our success is directly related to the ability uh, to make fast decisions made based on whatever data uh, that is available. So, so this is this is essentially uh, 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 what we wanted to talk about today. Uh, what are the different uh, what goes into a good workflow, what are the different things that you have to keep in mind when you uh, design or uh, uh, code a workflow. 
uh, so what we want uh, from you is some feedback uh, to show to tell us what you felt about uh, uh, this this presentation uh, and uh, we and we'd love to make make these presentations relevant for you and uh, make sure that they stay useful so your feedback goes to, goes a long way towards uh, uh, defining uh, these these presentations in the future so please do give us uh, a frank feedback uh, in the uh, in the feedback form that uh, uh, will be given in the uh, Scott, do you want? Yes, yeah, so I've actually put the link to the feedback form into the chat area uh, for everyone. So that should be in, in there and available for you. So it is a link, uh, https um, colons forward slash forward slash goo dot gl uh, with the code behind that. That will take you right to the feedback form. It will only take you just a couple of minutes to actually uh, uh, do the feedback form. Uh, simply just kind of just five little quick questions uh, so the feedback will definitely uh, help them to fine-tune uh, the message and to give you some more um, you know some possible uh, uh, you know a possible webinar in the future to for more advanced um, workflow um, information so Definitely worth your time to fill this out, and I believe there's an offer that goes along with this, which is the free copy of the workflow checklist. If anyone does not see the link, uh, just raise your hand uh, in the GoToWebinar, and then I will see that, and I'll get the direct message to you. Okay, about 15 more seconds to finish up uh, the feedback. If you're still working on that uh, feedback form as we get get uh, back into the webinar, that's okay. Just go ahead and get that completed. Um, and maybe you won't have to do that after the webinar, but uh, get that completed. It'll be very helpful for future webinars. So it'll all come back to you as uh, improved webinars or other topics. Okay, back over to you, Tirag and An Anantan. So, uh, so quick recap, and uh, we'll have some. Uh, we'll have uh, uh, quest. We'll take some questions. So, uh, what we saw today uh, are uh, how process benefits um, and business benefits uh, translate, and uh, uh, that's how a good workflow uh, results. And uh, but what we didn't, what we entirely found out afterward is that these critical success factors are also uh, a key uh, part of this process and uh, these are these are what make uh, a workflow great so we can take some questions now okay so if you have any questions um, there is a uh questions section in your go to webinar control panel if you uh, pop that open you can ask uh, questions about workflow and uh, what I'll do is I'll repeat that question or I'll to Chirag and Anantan and that way they can respond let me just open up this uh, Perfect. Yeah, just type in your questions if you have any questions. Okay. 
All right, our audience is just a little bit shy today, but um, don't have any questions coming in. All right. Yeah, so Chirag and Ananta, I don't think they have any questions uh, for the webinar today. Okay. All right. So uh, th that's fine. So, uh, so thank you all for uh, uh, sitting through this webinar. Um, uh, you, I'm, of course, you didn't have a lot of questions today, but you can see our uh, contact information on screen, and you can you can send us uh, all your questions and inquiries um, on this email that you see on screen. Uh, a recording of this webinar will be made available uh, on our website shortly, so you can you can see that as well, and uh, uh, then reach out to us. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for doing this, and have a great day, everybody. And uh, again, an email will be sent out to you with uh, the link to uh, the, the recording, and uh, we'll go from there. So thank you again for your attendance, and Chirag and Ananta, thank you very much for the webinar, and have a great day. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Scott.